This discussion on calcium supplements. I'm Dr. Todd Cooperman, and we're here on Facebook Live. Um, and this is a great time for us to be talking about calcium supplements as Consumer Lab just published uh, a major report where we went out and purchased uh, 27 different calcium supplements, uh, tested them rigorously, and uh, have published uh, our results online now at consumerlab.com. And I'm going to be talking about uh, those results and also, really and more broadly, whether you even need to take a calcium supplement, um, who it benefits, who it doesn't, uh, what to avoid, really kind of soup to nuts on calcium. We'll try to get it done pretty quickly. Uh, since we're here live, uh, you are more than welcome to send in questions or comments uh, on, on Facebook and we'll try to address questions that come in. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Consumer Lab, um, I'm the founder of Consumer Lab. I'm an MD. Uh, we have a research group that uh, buys and tests products all the time. Every three weeks we put out another report on, on supplements, whether it's melatonin or calcium or CoQ10 or herbal supplements, even uh, chocolates and olive oils. Um, we are kind of the go-to group uh, out there and have been for now uh, 18 years uh, for people who really are serious about finding the best quality supplements. We don't sell supplements. We don't make any money from anyone who sells supplements in terms of getting a commission or anything. We're really just providing information. The, what funds us are subscriptions to Consumer Lab. I'm happy to say we have uh, well over 75,000 paying subscribers, um, uh, as well as many libraries subscribe and universities subscribe. Um, and that's what keeps us going, and, and we've been uh, doing this for a long time now. Um, so again, we're going to talk about calcium supplements today, uh, kind of starting from why you might need them, um, what type to take, the form, uh, the quality, um, and again, I'd be happy to take questions that come in from you uh, while we're going through this. So just to kind of start, um, first of all, what is calcium? What does it do for you? Obviously, it's a very important mineral. It's interesting, you know, the minerals that you take um, especially calcium um, can be very bulky because you have to basically create your your entire skeleton from from calcium um, and you need to maintain that which is why some of the calcium supplements can be quite large um, calcium is important not only for your bones it's important for your nervous system it's important for your cardiovascular system it has many other roles uh, that it plays so do you really need to take a calcium supplement though is, is really the big question here tonight. Um, and um, I'm going to tell you, you may not need to take a calcium supplement. It really depends on who you are. Um, first of all, um, the amount of calcium that you need depends on, on your age, your gender. Basically, uh, most people need about 1,000 milligrams a day. Um, as you get older, you need 1,200 milligrams a day. Younger people, ages uh, up to 19, basically 4 to 19, you need 1,300 um, milligrams per day. Um, and if you're over 70, uh, you also need uh, 1,300 milligrams per day. So um, that's how much you need. Now, how much do people actually get from what they eat? Um, many people get plenty of calcium from what they eat if they're eating dairy foods. If you're not eating dairy foods, you're probably not getting enough calcium. Uh, you can get it from some other foods. You can get it from soybeans and other beans. It's actually in spinach, but unfortunately that's calcium oxalate and you don't absorb it very well. Uh, so that's not going to do, do you very much good. So for those people who don't get enough calcium, um, or those people who are more likely not to get enough calcium, which would be uh, younger uh, uh, women, basically girls ages, uh, uh, up to four, ages 9 to 18 actually are the most likely not to get enough calcium uh, from their diet um, and could benefit from a calcium supplement. And that's the benefits have been shown in terms of bone density as well as uh, the strength of bones uh, in young women because they're still building um, their uh, skeletons and they really need that calcium. Um, as we get older, we don't really need as much um, and certainly not from a, from a supplement because um, we're getting it from our diets. but. Uh, the people who do seem to benefit most from a supplement in terms of uh, adults are women um, who are postmenopausal, particularly those who have had a hysterectomy uh, and are on hormone therapy. 
Um, these people are, these women are much more likely to uh, suffer from osteoporosis and they can, they will benefit from, from uh, calcium supplementation. There are also in women, some other general benefits have been shown uh, in terms of even a slightly lower risk of death over a period of certain studies uh, for women who took uh, calcium supplements. However, the caution here is that you can't take um, too much calcium. You don't want to get more than 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day from a supplement. You don't want to take more than 500 milligrams of calcium uh, in a dose from a supplement. You can't absorb more than 500 milligrams of calcium at a time anyhow. Um, so basically, young women, uh, postmenopausal women are the, one, are the people who are most likely to benefit uh, from a calcium supplement. Um, the next thing I really want to talk about is uh, um, how do you choose a calcium supplement? So as I mentioned here at Consumer Lab, we recently tested uh, 27 different uh, calcium supplements, all types and sizes, liquids, gummies, tablets, um, chews, um, and for all different types of people, children, adults uh, as well. So what did we find? Well. Unfortunately, we did find a few problems. First of all, uh, one uh, calcium supplement made from, it was an algae-based uh, calcium that was used, was contaminated with a small amount of lead. Now, lead can occur with calcium. They both come out of the ground. Um, but we have found problems uh, actually repeatedly over time with uh, algae-based calcium. Uh, it seems to be getting better. We actually didn't find as much lead as we found um, in the past in, in this type of uh, supplement. Uh, but that, that was one product that was certainly not approved by us. Um, another problem that we found is the tablets of one product would not break apart properly. Uh, when we test these supplements, we put them through many different uh, types of analysis. One is that we put them into basically a disintegrator where we're putting it into uh, uh, warm water. Uh, it's being agitated for uh, 30 minutes. And by that time, tablets are supposed to break apart. Uh, nothing should be left at that point. However, this product continued to uh, remain hard and, and present, and it took us 49 minutes to actually get that product uh, to finally break apart, which means that you may not be getting the, the full benefit of it. It's not breaking apart quickly enough. You may not be absorbing it well enough. Um, so that's an important test that we do as well. Obviously, we're also testing these products to see if they actually contain the calcium and other ingredients that they claim to contain. For example, for example, we looked at the amount of vitamin D in these supplements, the amount of magnesium in these supplements as well. Um, so among the products that did pass our tests, um, so which ones were the best? Well, um, first of all, I should say that we did find many good calcium supplements. In fact, uh, the cost was uh, as low as two to four cents uh, for a good dose, you know, about 500 milligrams of calcium. Uh, and I'll show you some of these pills that have, that have passed our tests. Um, again, if you want to see the full report and, and the identities of these products, um, please subscribe to Consumer Lab um, online. You'll get access to all of our reports over, on over a thousand supplements, and that's being updated every day with new information. Um, and we are also, um, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, putting out new reports on a whole different categories of supplements every three weeks. Um, so getting to the products that actually uh, pass our test, there are two main types of calcium found in supplements. One is ca uh, calcium citrate, and the other one is calcium carbonate. It's the same calcium carbonate that's in um, oyster shells um, and coral. Uh, you know, there was a big excitement for, over coral calcium many years ago um, because it contains very small amounts of other minerals as well. So that's calcium carbonate. The downside of calcium carbonate um, is that it can upset your stomach a bit, um, so it must be taken with food. Um, the other most really popular uh, type of calcium is calcium citrate. Calcium citrate is easier on your stomach. Um, it may be absorbed slightly better. Uh, it, it is a, a really a more popular uh, type of, of calcium at this point. The downside with calcium citrate uh, is that it's actually much larger than calcium carbonate. Uh, you need to take more of it to, to get the same amount of calcium. And I'll, I'll show you an example. 
Um, this is uh, one of the um, calcium supplements that has passed our tests uh, recently. Um, I'm going to show you, this is one that's made from calcium uh, citrate. It has 250 milligrams of calcium. Uh, this one is made from calcium carbonate. It has uh, five or 600 milligrams of, of calcium. So more than twice the amount of calcium in the calcium citrate. Um, so if you're gonna take calcium citrate and you want 500 mil milligrams per day, you're gonna have to take uh, usually two of these pills per day um, as opposed to one with calcium carbonate. Um, the time that you take these pills is important also because calcium competes for absorption with other minerals. So if you're taking magnesium, for example, um, you don't want to be taking it at the same time that you take your calcium. It, it's kind of ironic because there are many products out there that are calcium magnesium supplements. Um, for some reason, there was uh, interest uh, or some, the belief that taking magnesium was critical when you take calcium. It's not true. Um, and if, if you have questions actually like, the, like this one, you know, should you take calcium with magnesium, must you, also go to consumerlab.com because we have answered hundreds of questions about supplements like, the, like that one. So you don't need to take a calcium supplement that contains magnesium, but you should take a calcium supplement, preferably, that has vitamin D. And the reason is you need vitamin D to absorb and use calcium. Now, if you already get enough vitamin D, uh, you think you're getting enough sunshine, or you're taking a vitamin D supplement, you certainly don't need more from, from uh, your calcium supplement. But if you don't, it's best to take a calcium uh, supplement that contains some vitamin D, at least 400 IU, um, 800 IU is fine. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about vitamin D out there that you need thousands and thousands of IUs of vitamin D. It's not true unless you're really deficient in vitamin D and you need to kind of get back up and maintain that level. Otherwise, most of the supplements out there do have 400, 800 IU of vitamin D and that's, that'll help you absorb the calcium. Um, if you have trouble um, with a tablet, there are certainly other, other products out there. For example, we tested uh, uh, liquid supplements, um, uh, which are great for people who have trouble swallowing um, uh, large pills. We tested uh, gummy uh, products, both for children and for adults. Also, um, uh, a fine uh, alternative if that's what you need to do to take your supplement or get your kids uh, to take a supplement. We tested uh, chews as well um, that are on the market. Um, chews are fine as well. Um, these are all okay. Just don't consider them candy because you can get too much calcium. And again, as I said earlier, if you exceed a thousand milligrams a day, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're increasing your risk of heart attack, stroke, possibly kidney stones as well. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with, with calcium is when, you, uh, when you're taking it, be aware that it can interact with certain medications. It can uh, reduce the absorption of thyroid medication if you take thyroid medication. It can interfere with uh, anti certain antibiotics. Um, and calcium, um, as I mentioned earlier, can also block uh, absorption or compete for absorption with other minerals, um, such as magnesium. I'm just gonna see if there are any other questions that have come up. Um, so I think, um, I hope I've answered a lot of questions that you may have about calcium. Um, again, it, all the information from really what you need, who needs it, who doesn't need it, side effects, how to take it, and most importantly, which products are really good quality calcium supplements are all found in the Consumer Lab report on calcium supplements uh, on the website at www.consumerlab.com. Um, so this is Dr. Todd Cooperman uh, from Consumer Lab on Facebook Live, and thank you very much for joining me.